Welcome to the Fiber Optic Sensing webinar. I'm uh, Executive Director Mark Unkefer, and we're very pleased to have today the NKT Photonics will be presenting some solutions for fire detection in theater using fiber optic linear height detection. Our, our two presenters are Felix Hatt and Stefan Breuer. Gentlemen, we look forward to your presentation. Thank you very much for the kind introduction. I'm Stefan Breuer from NKT Photonics, product manager of sensing applications and recently switched to the sales department. And I'm very pleased to um, talk to you about the solutions with um, fiber optic linear heat detectors. So um, going through the agenda, first I will start um, talking about a little bit about NKT Photonics itself. Then I'll um, briefly uh, introduce the basics of distributed fiber optic sensing systems. Um, provide an overview of linear heat detecti detection systems and afterwards I will hand over to my colleague Felix Heck who will uh, talk about the case study um, just mentioned, um, LHD installation in theaters and operas. So NKT Photonics um, has uh, started its journey in the uh, 1980s, so um, as part of the NKT cables, a start production of the optical fibers and from this point on, it was uh, consequently uh, growing with a lot of acquisitions in the um, laser market, um, like um, ultra-fast lasers, ultra-white light lasers, and so on. And in 2016, the LEOS technologies became finally fully part of the NKT Photonics. Uh, although we were always part of the NKT Photonics, we were just rebranded. So, looking into, into some numbers, we can show that the photonics market is, is continuously growing also. So from 2015, with an um, revenue of uh, 40 million, growing to 2019, almost doubling the revenue. So this is uh, something a um, uh, little bit ex ex um, exceeding the uh, typical market, but it's showing definitely the trend of the uh, photonics market. So going into um, Felix, next slide, please. Yeah, thanks. Um, looking into what, what we're all doing, so um, four um, sites in Denmark where our headquarters is, in Great Britain, in Zurich, and in US Boston, the lasers are manufactured and developed, while in Cologne, Germany, the distributed fiber optic sensing systems are um, manufactured, developed, uh, maintained, and distributed all over the world. So um, this is actually the part where we are going to talk about. The D4 systems, so it's uh, consisting of linear heat detection, where we talk today mainly about um, temperature sensing in general, strain sensing also, and acoustic sensing. All of these four are part of DFOS systems. Uh, what we are using them for, or what the market is using them for, is condition monitoring. For example, um, power cable monitoring, LNG leak detection reactors, furnace heat map generation, getting uh, more information about infrastructures, infrastructure monitoring, bridges, tunnels and so on, third party intrusion, and of course, um, fire detection. So, um, main goal is protecting assets, getting more information about them, and therefore um, fiber optic sensing systems are fast and accurate in event detection. And moreover, they are highly adaptable to the needs of the client and of the solution. So, also a small uh, journey through the DFOS systems from uh, LEOS and KT Photonics. Starting in 1997 was the first DTS of four kilometer range used for fire detection. Um, was the second generation of DTS with already 16 kilometers. Um, and in 2011, the current generation, the OTS3, Raman based also, uh, with a range of 30 kilometers, respectively 14 kilometers uh, for fire detection LHD. This is the first unit which was completely maintenance free, so no moving parts, no active cooling. Uh, what we call industrial design. In 2016, we introduced the Brignon DSTS with a range of uh, 100 kilometers and more. And in 2018, we also introduced the DAST system with two times 70 kilometers. And moreover to the hardware, we are more and more looking into software solutions like the depth of burial for power cable monitoring. And in 2020, we also developed the strain separation feature and the um, HVDC rating for power cables direct current. So as you can see, we currently increase 
the portfolio and DFOS systems uh, to, to support the market more and more. So the DFOS basics, on the upper left-hand side, you can see the DFOS interrogator, which is uh, connected to a fiber optic um, cable. And what we basically do is providing information uh, as, a, as an array, temperature array, strain gauge array, or a microphone array along the whole fiber route. So whenever an event um, occurs, like temperature event, this is changing the fiber properties. And with the laser light, we feed into the system, into the fiber optic cable, um, we see a different backscattering of the light. And this is then processed into uh, the according information like uh, temperature, strain, or dynamic strain vibrations. There are three main um, backscattering effects, the Rayleigh, the Brignon, and the Raman. And on the lower side, you can see in the table what they are used for. So Raman system is temperature only, um, also used for um, LHD systems, and they are strain insensitive. Brignon systems um, are used for temperature and strain, uh, while typically they are measuring both temperature and strain, as mentioned in the slide before. Now we have uh, finally developed the strain separation, so we can fully separate strain and temperature. The relay mode is used for dynamic strain, vibrations, acoustic signals, and the gradient temperature monitoring. So looking a little bit more into the linear heat detector, the detector, which is the um, G3 system, what we call it. It's uh, for us industrial design and within up to 14 kilometers. And this can be used for uh, also um, X areas, so 8X, T3, and T4 capable. It's um, passively cooled, no moving parts, with a broad operating temperature. It's completely ice safe, and we have an internal storage, so it's a standalone system. And um, it's fully integrated in one software. So, whatever um, you use for um, fiber optic sensing systems, you can integrate it in our uh, software and then um, get all the data stored, visualized, and um, can also communicate to SCADA systems um, and do all the, the calculation jobs within the software. So, this is what, what we look, what we uh, can provide as a software solution. So, um, providing not only the, the temperature information, but also making them very nicely visible to, to the client so that he's not only looking into profiles, but he can see all the alarms um, and events happening in a uh, nicely shaped overview, also visible on um, um, static maps like you can see in the middle, or on even uh, GPS maps, or in an integrated web browser. So if you want to take analysis, um, you can take you can take uh, like like what you can see here, false color schemes, and look into trends of, of temperature development or strain development, and um, we can do min, max, or average analysis over a certain time frame, so that you can really get more knowledge about your system. So, one of the biggest advantages of an LHD system is actually that we can uh, that it can provide individual parameterization. So. We have, first of all, hundreds of zones, let's say up to 1,000, and every zone is freely configurable with an alarm setting, as you can see it on, on the left-hand side. So we have the min-max parameter looking into um, the, the temperature rising in the zone, the rate of rise over a certain time frame, so um, heat development, let's say, and we have the um, temperature difference if a certain um, location within the, within the zone is increasing, above a certain, a certain threshold, then an alarm is generated, and all of these alarms are then transmitted, uh, typically via hardwired alarm transmission, to um, the fire alarm panel. So, on top of this, we also provide for sure um, SCADA communication or high-level interfaces, so if needed, in fire detection or in other applications, we can also transmit all the information via um, typical industrial SCADA protocols. Every LHD system comes with um, fiber optic cables. These two are the typical cables for um, LHD systems on the left-hand side. So we have a metal armored uh, cable, um, which is um, highly protected against um, all kinds of, of attacks from animals. And we have the metal free design, um, which is uh, a little bit lighter. So um, what every fiber optic cable has in common is its maintenance free. It has a very long lifetime, tens of years and um, it's proven in telecommunication. 
So they're all immune to radio frequencies and um, electromagnetic interferences, meaning even if they have a high uh, power source, electromagnetic interference, in principle, fiber optic systems do not care about this because they're basically immune to this. What we have to do for sure is to thermal couple this um, fiber optic cable to the protected asset. Let's say it has to be in uh, more or less close uh, proximity to the to the heat source. So, and um, every fiber optic cable can then be also tailored for specific applications. So there are a broad range of fiber optic cables throughout the market. So, how do we integrate an LHD system into the um, into the alarm system? First of all, we are not a standard detector. LHD systems always consider special detectors, while standard detectors are used for uh, room protection, which is a mandatory for, uh, for um, uh, fire detection concepts like smoke detectors or beam detectors. And then there are certain uh, special detectors like aspirating smoke detectors or the uh, optical linear heat detector. And those are um, can be used for room protection, but they also can be used for um, equipment protection. And as all um, fire detection systems, it can be used or will be used for uh, protecting human and animal lives and assets. So, however, we are um, integrating this into the fire alarm control panel. And if an alarm is, is uh, detected and transmitted to the fire alarm control panel, this is triggering certain um, safety measures like ventilation or um, water uh, mist uh, generation to, to um, directly uh, uh, the fight the fire and of course uh, alarming of, of personnel and then directly call the emergency like the firefighting brigade. So um, as we are a special detector with an LHD system um, it's uh, mandatory to, to have um, talks with the clients. So we are the experts in LHD systems. The client has, has a problem which is not solvable with the standard detectors and we provide the expertise, the client has the problem, and together we are uh, plotting a system layout, which then can be integrated to uh, optimal um, protect the asset uh, of, the, of the client to provide the best solution. So coming to the, to the fire protection concept in general, which means, uh, as mentioned before, we have the standard room protection which is required by law and insurances. And there are suitable detectors, for example, the aspirating smoke detector systems, beam detectors, or multi criteria spot detectors. They can be used, for example, in, as you can see on the left hand side, in a reactor building, or on the lower hand side in the, in the comprehensive system in an airport. So, if you or if the client wants to have a further protection of the equipment, like the conveyor belt or the reactors itself, then this is always in addition to the standard room protection. So then he's uh, in need of an early detection and intervention to, the, to minimize the risk at the equipment. And this can be done, for example, with the uh, fiber optic system by attaching it directly to the, to the protected asset. So however, um, this, is, this can also be uh, voluntary by the operator. So it does not have to be part of the fire protection concept, but um, can also be voluntarily. So, and at this point, I hand over to Felix. Yes, Stefan. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the introduction. Uh, let me say some words about myself. My name is Felix Heck and uh, I'm with NKT Photonics now since uh, two years with the special detectors of uh, optical linear heat detectors. But I have a background of uh, more than 15 years now with special detection. Uh, in the past, it was uh, aspirating smoke detectors. So uh, again, thank you very much for uh, uh, opening the door here to the uh, LHD systems and to the fire detection systems. Uh, as Stefan said, uh, the room protection, the room protection will be uh, completely remained untouched now. Uh, this is uh, required by law, and uh, we will have a closer look on the uh, equipment uh, protection. So when you have a look here on the left-hand side on the picture, you can see the uh, Elbphilharmonie, the large concert hall of the Elbphilharmonie in Hamburg. And um, imagine that you have the task and you have to provide a solution for the fire protection 
uh, of the people in the audience. So there are a lot of people there in the audience and you need uh, to uh, protect them and the interior, of course, the high value interior uh, with the minimum impact uh, on the form and of the function of the whole theater, of course. Yeah. Uh, the overall height of the of the building here of this room is uh, 25 meters, and you can imagine if you install um, a, a smoke detection system, whatever it is, a smoke detection system uh, on the ceiling. It needs time for the smoke to travel from the ignition, from the from the burning seat, let's say, say uh, to the ceiling, and uh, this will have a delay uh, in time. Um, and um, of course, uh, it uh, the the smoke can be diluted or it can be um, yeah shifted by the ventilation to another uh, side and so on. And you cannot uh, really detect the or localize the seat of the uh, fire. Um, the damage, of course, if there is a fire burning down there, the damage uh, uh, can be can get larger and larger uh, the more fire you have, and then uh, of course a lot of um, seats or the the floor here uh, is then uh, damaged. So the ge geometry and the size of the building that must be protected plays a, a, a sufficient role here. Uh, as Stefan already said, yeah, life safety reasons for early fire detection are the most, uh, uh, the, the highest uh, goal for fire protection systems. So here in this building, you can imagine that there are a lot of elder people sitting there, listen to the music. And uh, these people are non-residents. That means that the people do not know where is the uh, emergency exit, for example, if there is smoke, if there is uh, uh, this event of a fire, these people can panic and this can cause uh, um, a delay of the evacuation, for example, and um, maybe uh, causes also a possibility of uh, panic. Um, this all this can also hinder the uh, fire brigade and the rescue workers to get into the building and concentrate on the fire extinguishing because they first have to get out uh, the people out of the building and uh, save them and make sure that they are uh, that they will not get hurt so what we need is the reduction of uh, the fire spreading that is the most important point here yeah. Uh, another point is uh, to protect the people's lives. Uh, the other point is, and this is of course uh, a goal of the uh, operator of this building here, is to reduce anyhow the fire damage of the for the whole building. Yeah, it is a very high valuable uh, interior, and so they do not want to have this damaged by fire, smoke, or even the ex uh, water from the from the fire brigade. Uh, and so uh, it was decided to uh, install a system here that can um, measure uh, accurately and uh, uh, extinguish the fire uh, as soon as it is uh, it, as soon as it is occurs. It is it will occur. So. Um, ignition sources that has been defined during the um, during this process, during this uh, development process, was for example cell phones uh, between the seats. So if the uh, cell phone fall falls out of, out of a pocket and the seat will flip up, it can easily break the cell phone, and so the cell phone, the battery gets overheated, and this is an ignition source. Uh, vandalism, pro, uh, pyrotechnics uh, are also in theaters and as a whole uh, could be an ignition source, maybe not in this theater, but it is not only a solution for this theater, it's also a solution for uh, uh, theaters in a whole, as a whole. Fire beams at stage level, of course, they are warm, they can heat up the, the stage or the, the seats there, and uh, this could also be an ignition source, as well as defective or electrical uh, equipment that are that is installed on the on the ground there. So what is important and what is the requirement for a reliable and extra ex, um, for a reliable and exact equipment monitoring system. It is a very high and accurate resolution um, and uh, monitoring of the 
fire and of the of the heat uh, at the at the floor level. What you can see here is um, um, is an is a, a little X course for uh, for all our um, people in the audience who are not working um, with uh, um, yeah, fire detection and linear heat detectors on a on a daily business. What we have here on the left side is the um, detector. Yeah, on the detector you can see a cable, like Stefan already introduced, uh, the, the optical cable, and the optical cable runs into the premises. And on each or these, uh, you can see that we measure the temperature at a certain range. Uh, so there is a, each spot will measure a temperature. And between these two temperature measurements, you can see that there is a sampling interval. And we need approximately three sampling intervals to, um, to get a spatial resolution. And the spatial resolution is uh, the resolution uh, to detect a fire or detect uh, a temperature change. This will be sometimes mixed up in the, uh, in the market sampling interval and spatial resolution and that is what is why it is uh, so important for me here uh, to mention this yeah. so for um, for example just to give you a number just to give you an idea the sampling interval uh, is uh, the distance between two measuring points that is what i explained uh, the minima um, sampling intervals uh, for our systems is uh, 10 centimeters for the uh, distributed temperature sensing and for all lhd system because it's a very fast measurement uh, system the sampling interval is approximately 25 centimeters yeah? And for the spatial resolution, for the resolution to uh, detect uh, fire uh, is uh, approximately three times the sampling interval. And uh, yeah, the uh, high sp uh, spatial resolution is a key factor for uh, fire, uh, for the fire location. And this here I, I will provide on the next slide. Uh, three examples or four examples here so that you can understand why this is needed. On the left hand side you can see a picture of a conveyor belt roller set and uh, because usually there's a conveyor on top uh, I, I cannot uh, show a picture of this and I took this here this picture and uh, draw the lines where the cable usually would be uh, installed in the yellow lines so that would be the uh, where the cables uh, would be installed and uh, we run the cable zigzag on the roller sets and uh, we detect the temperature of each individual roller or each individual set it depends on the setting of the um, yeah, of the of the parameterization of the controller and uh, this uh, is to uh, to provide enough information for preventive maintenance that means if a bearing gets stuck for example or uh, if there's anything between the roller and the uh, conveyor for example then uh, the temperature at this roller will heat up and then uh, we can send or we can inform let's say the operator and they can send uh, somebody there to uh, yeah to do the maintenance or to to help the conveyor to run free uh, for parking houses, uh, of course, uh, nowadays we are getting more and more underground uh, parking houses, especially in the cities. There's no uh, place for uh, um, for parking, really parking houses. It's more in, under, in the underground. Uh, this uh, means that uh, we have a certain danger when there is uh, when there is a fire. People must get out. Um, the fire brigade must get in and uh, also uh, the new ignition sources for example from the e vehicle charging stations uh, cause uh, can cause uh, yeah a fire here and uh, so it is important to get an early warning and if you um, uh, if you install a, um, a linear heat detection cable straight over the over the cars, you need to detect a burning car, and that is why you need a high uh, spatial resolution to uh, get uh, uh, yeah, a fire signal uh, very soon. 
On the right hand top side, you can see um, uh, a production machine. This is a galvanic production mas machine. And uh, here also we can lay the cable directly into the production machine and we can then detect um, at uh, yeah, special points of interest uh, the temperature um, of this, of this uh, location there. And then if it is overheated, of course, we can send somebody there uh, to do the maintenance or if there is a fire, we can give the fire signal. Uh, the, the good um, the, uh, the, the, what is uh, what is the advantage of the uh, linear heat detector is of course the um, the immunity against uh, electromagnetic pulses or um, electromagnetic influences, oils, chemicals, all these liquids uh, does not harm the uh, the cable, and so we can uh, use the um, the linear heat detector to detect um, yeah heat on and fires in such large production machines. Right hand underneath, this is a cable uh, tray, or these are cable trays and a cable tunnel here. Um, here in Germany, we have the uh, requirement according to the yeah, German regulations. Uh, uh, German Institute of Norming, um, that uh, temperature of a cable cannot or shall not um, be higher uh, than 70 degrees, uh, for example. But if you have a bundle of cable, this can easily be um, heated up to a higher temperature. And so we can measure this from the outside. We can measure the uh, the temperature of the cable bundle. And this will help so the operator of the factory, for example, or the airport here uh, to make sure that uh, his cables are in good conditions, um, even if, uh, yeah, even, uh, yeah, and we can protect them uh, on, on these temperatures. Um, especially when there are any uh, crossings or uh, sleeves in between the cables, these are a point of failure and there we can also measure easily the temperature rise and uh, then inform the customer, okay, there's a problem, please uh, decrease the current consumption uh, of this cable, for example. Um, for this production machine and also for the uh, cable tunnel underneath that uh, comes sometimes in combination. Um, so if we protect the 300 meter, for example, production machine here, we can also offer the customer to uh, to protect also the cables that runs to this machine and, uh, and, and then um, increase, the, let's say, the value of the optical linear heat detectors. But uh, the topic today is uh, not the industrial use of uh, optical linear, linear heat detectors, it's uh, theaters. And so we come back to the uh, theaters here. What you can see here is um, yeah, uh, the testing of the uh, solution or the trial of the solution for the fire measurement, con uh, fire protection concept in theaters. Uh, in 2008, we started with this uh, for the Hamburg Elbphilharmonie. I will show you a picture later on, and you remember that we had the uh, large concert hall already. Um, so it started in 2008, and um, yeah, the idea, instead of installing everything on the roof, uh, the idea was to install the detection and extinguishing on the floor level. Yeah, not from the roof, um, sprinkler system from the roof, from the top, from the ceiling, uh, but from the um, from the floor level. And uh, decent investigations and testings were necessary to prove the effectiveness of the um, protection system. These, um, yeah, these uh, testing has been done according or in in let's say not according to, but also in. Um, um, were based were based on the NFPA 70, 50, 750 and the EN 14975 Annex A, um, so that uh, we made sure that we also um, followed the usual regulation and guidelines uh, for this testing. Um, 
Yeah, very, uh, various tests has been done uh, for the fire protection system. You can see this here, and, and I enlarged this uh, little picture here uh, from the left side uh, in the in the red um, uh, in the red uh, uh, frame. Uh, so what you see here is the burning chair, of course, and uh, the uh, the circle with the cross in uh, uh, within the cross. Um, there, these are uh, linear heat detectors. That is one linear heat detector with an optical techno uh, uh, technology like we have. And the other one was a copper wired LHD uh, system. And um, underneath the uh, uh, copper wired LHD system on the backside of, the, of this chair here, of this burning chair, you can see that there was also an aspirating smoke detection system uh, installed. It's the one with the, um, yeah, with the triangle with the opening to the left. It was a, an aspirating smoke detection system at that uh, time. And on the top uh, of this room here, on uh, on the top, you can also see another triangle. That was a normal point light detector in a height of 5.5 meters that should detect uh, the burning chair as well and uh, see. Um, uh, the uh, the difference in in detection from the from the floor mounted uh, detection systems. So very important for the uh, for the detection system was the repro reproducibility, of course, and the accuracy. Uh, that was uh, the, that were the key factors that we can really trigger the specially defined and um, specially designed nozzles for the. Uh, water mist uh, extract of the uh, uh, at the floor level. Uh, these tests has been to the, together with uh, our partner here for the uh, for the uh, installations we have done in the past. That was uh, Fogtech at that time, and uh, yeah, with them uh, together we had three um, three nice uh, protections. Yeah, the result of the, all these tests, a lot of tests has been done and it was a, a long time uh, that these tests has been, uh, has been, um, yeah, uh, has been done. Uh, the result was that a fiber optic linear heat detection, detection system was the most suitable detector, of course. Uh, the reproducibility um, uh, of the, uh, to detect a burning seat was very high here and, uh, yeah, it was the, the best system to trigger the defined uh, nozzles underneath the seats. Um, the nozzles in the in the theaters, not only uh, in the Hamburg Elbphilharmonie, but also in the other ones, uh, are grouped, are put into groups, and um, a an very individual planning for this is necessary for each theater. So the cables, it was defined that the cables can be installed on the uh, on the stairs. So there are the, the as you know in theaters, the, the seats are uh, installed in, in stairs, on stairs. So the um, the heat detection cable can be installed on the backside of the seat or on the stair on the uh, on the floor uh, itself uh, directly behind the uh, seats. The one of the main um, challenges for the installation of the linear heat detection cable was the uh, installation of the cable directly um, in the vis visible uh, area of the of the audience, um, and uh, the mechanical impact that can happen uh, to a cable that is uh, is laid out in that um, in that part of the. Um, of the audience. Uh, the concept as a whole is a combined concept uh, for the uh, of the fiber optic LHD system and the water, water mist extinguishing system and it has been uh, examined by the DECRA. Uh, DECRA is a qualified and independent um, association or organization um, so that uh, provides services for the uh, industrial and building inspections. It's like the may, maybe you know uh, the TRIF that is uh, more known. Um, 
So how to get the cable now on the ground or better in the ground? Practically, we install the cable here, for example, this is again the Hamburg Elbphilharmonie on the left side, uh, the pictures on the left side uh, on the bottom. Um, so the sensor cable is directly laid out behind the seats of the um, of the rows or in between, let's say, so the people can uh, step on it. And uh, it is very important for us to uh, to protect uh, also the uh, the cable from uh, mechanical impacts, for example, from high heels or uh, yeah, people uh, running about uh, around it. Um, yeah, the cable itself is a four millimeter uh, steel protected cable. So we have steel wires and a steel tube. And in that uh, you have the two fibers and the two fibers then uh, do the measurement for the, uh, for the temperature. Mechanical protection was one of the topics I mentioned already. So um, just to put the cable in there was not an option. Uh, we tried and tested that. That was not an option. So um, two uh, possible ways uh, are, had been found to install the cables uh, directly on the ground. Um, on the left-hand side, you can see um, you can see the uh, the cutout for the cable itself, and the cable is also um, protected in a aluminium, specially uh, made uh, aluminium um, rail, special made uh, aluminium profile uh, that protects the cable from coming out, falling out of this um, of this uh, uh, cutout here. Uh, it secures the fixation of the uh, sensor cable, and it is also uh, architecture very a very pleasant uh, solution. So finally, let's put all this together, yeah, and uh, see how the system works in reality. What we see here is, of course, uh, it's a concept. It's an example. Yeah, uh, we can see here the seat rows. Um, in, in black and white, and we will very soon ignite the black chair here. Uh, we can see the cable is running zigzag. The sensor cable is running zigzag through this uh, seat rows. That is really in reality also in the in the theaters. It has been done like this, and it has it is connected, of course, to the um, linear heat detector. The linear heat detector, as a standard, is connected to the fire um, alarm. Uh, central panel and the fire alarm central panel to trigger the extinguishing part of the system uh, is connected to the extinguishing control panel, which is which then triggers the uh, special nozzles. So now we ignite the the seat here. So the seat will be ignited. The fire is getting up and uh, as soon as the heat will be detected, of course, by the uh, by the sensor cable and the um, detector, the linear heat detector will get into alarm. Once it gets into alarm, in the, into alarm, it will signal this to the fire alarm panel. And this fire alarm panel then gets into alarm, of course. And the fire alarm panel then provides or triggers the fire extinguishing panel. So it, it activates a special zone. As I said, not every uh, individual uh, nozzle will be triggered. Extinguishing nozzle will be triggered. It activates a zone. And here it is zone 7411, a very famous uh, number for water from Cologne. And um, then this zone will be activated and the fire will be extinguished by water mist. It's a water mist extinguishing system. That is how uh, the system works in general, let's say. As I said, uh, very individual planning has to be done for each uh, project. 
So how to get to a successful uh, project and the protection project uh, protection of the of the theater, uh, especially in um, refurbished or uh, if if uh, if someone gets the idea to refurbish a theater, um, the this uh, gets the idea of this, uh, we should be contacted. It is uh, very um, advisable that. Uh, we, for example, will be contacted. Uh, what can we do? Can we protect the audience um, with this system here? Is this possible to install this? We will then, with our partners, of course, do the individual and detailed planning for this respective project. And after the planning, of course, um, yeah, the uh, the operator will be happy and order our system. Uh, we will do the uh, mechanical installation on site. This is something that uh, we have done uh, several times before and we can, we can do this. We have our experience now and we can also do the uh, project uh, parameterization and testing and all these things. This is something uh, we have enough experience uh, from the previous projects, of course, uh, but it is very, very uh, recommendable uh, to involve us uh, in to the ideas of uh, the refurbishment at a very, very early stage of uh, development. Of the very early stage of the theater refurbishment. So this is one of my final slides. Uh, here you can see the theaters we have already protected. Uh, on the left-hand side, let's start with a, a world-famous landmark uh, in the uh, harbor city of, uh, of Hamburg. Uh, this is the Elbphilharmonie, Hamburg Elbphilharmonie at the top of the river Elbe. It's a very new building, so it has been newly erected and uh, the opening ceremony took place in January uh, 2017. And uh, underneath you can see the picture that we have already uh, seen. Uh, here the cable is laid into the uh, audience and uh, we have done, well, we had done the, um, yeah, the in invention, let's say, of this combined system between the uh, optical linear heat detection system and the water mist system. In the middle, you can see a building uh, that's the Hamburg Meer Theater. Uh, it was an existing building, so the building existed already. It was an, an inside market hall, market hall in the past, and uh, it has been the whole interior has been taken out, and the theater has newly built in. Um, it's a multifunctional theater with 3,500 uh, people to, yeah, uh, to sit there, to to uh, to have seats there, and it should be when Corona is, uh, would not have been the uh, uh, took place, uh, would have been the location of the Harry Potter and the Cursed Child show, since uh, more than two years now. So it's a it's an existing building with a new theater. The the last project we have done on the right side. This is the Deutsche Schauspielhaus, and the Deutsche Schauspielhaus is a very old theater, more than 100 years old, 120 years old, approximately. Um, directly, um, um, it's an existing, as I said, existing uh, building. Um, and the installation of uh, the protection system uh, took place last summer um, during the complete refurbishment. Uh, underneath, you see it's a very nice baroque uh, uh, audience room. Uh, this uh, this room uh, looked uh, very different at that time uh, with all the play, uh, with all the protection above the seats and so on and so on. Space for 1,200 people and. Uh, yeah, it's a, a very nice uh, and our last um, uh, our last uh, protection of a the theater. So now I'm now I'm at the end of my presentation, and we can start the question and answer, answering session. And uh, you are more than welcome to ask this gentleman here or one of his colleagues. Please feel free.
Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for uh, this, Mark Uncover again, and thank you very much for an informative uh, presentation. If you want to, uh, excuse me, if you want to uh, ask a question, uh, you can do it in the text box. We have a couple already. Uh, one in particular, you, you mentioned some of the uh, uh, standards bodies, so the European standards body. Have you had any installations in the United States, or more specifically, have you worked with uh, the um, the uh, 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 Underwriters Lab, the UL certification effort? Um, so uh, not yet. Uh, we are uh, we are, would we would be happy to do this. Um, at the, the as I said, the concept and the protection concept was based on the NFPA. So NFPA is a, a um, U.S. Uh, regulation, National Fire Protection Association. NFPA 750 was the basis of the tests for the Hamburg Elbphilharmonie. Uh, we we did not work with the uh, UL um, uh, with the UL uh, uh, authority so far. Uh, but uh, yeah, d we can do this, of course. Okay, if there's thank any you very request, much. We can do this. Uh, another question, and I think some people are looking forward to uh, potential other applications for you. And the application in question was uh, would this work? Uh, I assume it would work, but uh, have you looked into uh, uh, data centers? Uh, data centers, of course, this is another another approach. Let's say uh, we can protect uh, and we can, um, yeah, protect and detect, uh, for example, uh, the heat rays in in data centers as well, um, and uh, it can be also extinguished. Maybe maybe not with uh, uh, water mist, but with uh, special. Uh, uh, other systems, uh, which uh, I'm not an expert for, we, but I know the right uh, people to contact here, of course. So there can be a fog, um, water fog, uh, it is called, as far as I know, uh, from from our partner FogTech, as the name says. Um, we can uh, we can work out a concept like this. I think it, uh, it, uh, we need some tests there, and we also need some uh, some trials and so on. Um, the uh, the concept itself, um, the concept for the theater with this detection and the extinguishing, for example, uh, could be also used in other event halls, for example, or uh, for the uh, governmental and city administration buildings where you have large conference rooms, for example. Uh, in fact, the, uh, the water mist system was installed in the Madrid uh, governmental and administration building uh, already yeah, as well. Not only Germany, it was also installed in Spain. And, and uh, returning to the topic again, which was, of course, theaters, uh, the question was, you know, we've talked about uh, temperature sensing. Uh, is it possible to also do uh, acoustic sensing? Uh, and I guess there was there's an implication in the question about potential privacy issues. So can you pick up, can you do acoustic and therefore, and also additionally, can you pick up conversations? So um, I, I'll tell in Felix. Um, so, in in general, uh, it, it sounds very much like you could um, pick up um, conversations. However, it's um, not not the approach, and I think this is also covered by the the let's say GDPR and so on. Um, so this is uh, something we we never wanted to do, and um, it's especially in some kind of these big applications like con concert halls and so on. There is most probably too much noise to even detect um, single conversations. I, I would think you'd have a whole lot of crosstalk in, in that environment. Uh, also, relative to coming back to theaters, uh, does the question about the installation does it have to be between the chairs, or is it possible to do it on the ceiling, or I guess along along the rows as well? Um, as I said, it's in individual uh, protection concept has to be uh, agreed and negotiated uh, when it comes to a protection. Yeah, what we want to achieve is that we uh, protect the the assets, uh, the human lives, of course, and the assets uh, of the operator of this uh, theater in the very best way, and we have to uh, provide a dedicated solution for this. Um, yes, of course, we can uh, put the cable, uh, yeah, 
on the side if only the side should be protected. If you want to protect the seat, a burning seat, and the in the seat rows, then you have to go directly between the seats. So that would really put kind of the immediate. Now, one of the things you talked about was the integration uh, component to that. And so the question, I guess, was to, to have a little elaboration on uh, how you integrate with other uh, fire detection systems and, and also the sort of the alarming function that goes to uh, uh, the external, external, sort, external resources like the fire department. So what is the question here for me? It's, well, the question uh, is, is I, I just to, the question is to asking you to elaborate on how your integration efforts uh, ties in with uh, more traditional fire detection systems, and does that tie it directly in with the alarming uh, system that a theater would have with uh, fire departments? This is very standardized. In the fire world, you have the fire protection uh, or the the, um, the fire alarming panel, let's say, and that requires, for example, um, a certain uh, a certain signal. Yeah, uh, we provide the certain signal to the fire alarm panel. We say, okay, this. Uh, this detector is now in alarm. This is unique for us. This is uh, for all uh, detectors. So a point type detector, a beam detector, a flame and smoke detector, aspirating detector signals this to the fire panel. This is uh, very standardized. For our system, for the uh, linear heat detection system, the advantage is that we can provide um, a bundle of outputs, for example, and we can then um, uh, parameterize the uh, the um, the location of the fire to this out to a certain output let's say uh, row 17 uh, seat 15 yeah that is burning and then we can um, parameter parameterize the um, the output and the output number 75 then is Triggered and then exactly the system knows, or the, the yeah the fire extinguishing system knows. Okay, there is the fire, and I have to uh, trigger the alarm at that point. So the, the follow-up question to that is: you, how do you address the issue of false positives? Is that a problem? And if so, how do you uh, uh, work with uh, to avoid uh, creating those kinds of situations? False alarms, you mean? False alarms, yes. False alarms, false alarms. Um, yeah, so um, the detector um, detects heat. Yeah, once there is, uh, is sufficient heat uh, provided to the system and to the cable, of course, then it triggers an alarm. That is what the uh, what the uh, system is there for. It's like a smoke detector. If you smoke under a smoke detector, it detects smoke. That is what it should be. Yeah. Uh, of course, due to the very um, adaptive and um, individual parameterization of the um, controller in such a theater, in this case here, uh, we can eliminate the 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 natural sources of a of a fire, for example, of a, of a of a false alarm. Yeah. So. Um, uh, Natural source could be uh, people are rubbing with their with their shoes over the over the sensor cable and things like this. This can can be eliminated. But if there is a certain heat at a certain point and a certain let's say uh, yeah um, a certain certain length, then of course uh, the alarm will be triggered. Well, that that's very helpful. Uh, and the next question is, did the initial theater performance test include using specialty made uh, aluminum profiles? If not, uh, will the aluminum profile potentially slow the detection time? So I guess that's a a, 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 a materials question. Yeah, uh, so it will not slow anything. Um, you can see that, uh, or you saw on the on the picture there, uh, that the uh, the aluminum profile was open on the top. Yeah, so the the heat from the from the burning chair can directly access uh, the cable, and this will not uh, the the uh, aluminium profile will not have any influence on the um, yeah on the on the detection. 
So this is a more technical question, a follow up to that was the response tested with cable installed in an aluminum groove. And I guess the assumption is that it was shielded uh, to avoid touching the ground material. The, uh, again, the question, please, sorry. Uh, was the response tested with cable installed in an aluminum groove? Um, at that time, I was not with the company. Uh, I have to find this out, uh, and uh, the person uh, who is interested in this can uh, contact me directly. Okay, fair enough. And um, it was it was the test has been made under the the best conditions uh, that um, that uh, are uh, yeah that can occur in such a theater. And as I said, the uh, in, um, the independent uh, organization, the DECRA, uh, performed the, or the, uh, um, accompanied the test and uh, approved of also the test. It was it's, a, it's an approved concept by the DECRA. And what is uh, what would be the maximum zones that can be programmed with your uh, LHD controller? It's a uh, 1,000 zones per cable. So if you have a four channel controller or per, per, per channel, if you have a four channel controller, uh, for, it's four times 1000 zones. And let me see, we have a, another one. This is a, a question that we frankly frequently have, which you can kind of clarify, I think sometimes a better understanding of how fiber optic sensing, and that is the question for, do you need a, second fiber to do a return to the controller. So I think you could probably do a little elaboration on how sensing works there. Um, so um, there are certain approaches. Um, however, with the Raman system, in general, it's single-ended. You usually terminate at the end, so we have an optical um, termination so that no back reflection at the very end of the fiber is occurring and disturbing the measurement. Uh, but you don't need um, any kind of loop. However, it's beneficial, especially in applications like this, which need a highly reliable detection uh, quality to install a loop and measure from both sides so that whenever you also have a um, fiber break or whatever, then you can still me measure up to the fiber break from both sides. So in, you're never completely blind. Um, the loop system uh, might be uh, necessary for um, Brillion system, so there are two different approaches uh, with BUTDA and BUTDR. Um, well, the BUTDA needs the, um, the loop system. It's a stimulated system where you have a second laser pulsing light into the, the loop. And with the BUTDR, it's a spontaneous backscattering. It's like the Raman system uh, in principle, so you have a single-ended system. You don't need a loop. Well, thank you. And I, I would say we now have... Uh... Uh, well, I got another one here. Uh, can you do perimeter surveillance for security purposes? Uh, yeah, yes, we can. I think this is one of the basic approaches. The first approach is from the DASA right. system. So mm -hmm. this is, uh, of course, also in the scope, yeah. Of course. Uh, so next question is kind of a standard question and is, I guess, a reminder to folks that the, the presentation will be, actually the entire presentation will be available on uh, the fiber optic sensing uh, uh, YouTube page, and so folks can go through the materials as well. And um, uh, also, obviously, your contact information is uh, available on the final slide right there, uh, so that for those folks who uh, have additional or more specific questions, uh, they can reach out to you. Uh, so thank you for a very informative pr presentation. I just will remind folks as well that uh, FOSA's uh, next uh, webinar will be uh, with AP Sensing, and it comes up on uh, uh, March 18th, so just another uh, two weeks away. And thank you, gentlemen, for uh, a very formative presentation. And that concludes this uh, webinar. Thank you very much, and also uh, thanks to Joy, who uh, really great job in the preparation. Thank you.